Okay, now. You <laughs> look like Spielberg over there. <laughs> maybe they're Scorsese. But maybe a little bit more Scorsese. Uh, obviously, uh, we had a little advantage tonight in a few areas. Points in the paint was big, 54 for us. And a season high in assist, which I was happy to see. We rested a little watch film on Wednesday. We're trying to work hard on our half court offense. It's an area where we got to continue to improve as the waters get deeper in our half court execution. Probably the next thing I'd be happy with is Titus Rubel's 8 of 8 at the foul line because the way he shoots the ball, he, he should be an 80% free throw shooter. So I guess now he's up into the 60s. Um, but uh, we should continue to get rock solid play out of Sean Kilpatrick and just keep trying to get our freshman minutes and develop those guys uh, as best we can. Technology at its finest. All right. I think he's ready now. Uh, Justin and Titus both said that you kind of challenged them to play defense the way Cincinnati teams play defense today. Like they were real happy with their defense. Yeah. Well, at halftime, I just I, I, I thought uh, I told them 28 points was too many. Of course, we gave them more, but in the second half, but when we put we came out and put the clamps on them early in the second half, we got up 30, put the game out of reach. Uh, we started the game, gave up three straight layups. I called timeout. You know, we, had, we we don't believe in you can win giving up layups, free throws, or standstill three point shots. Those are the three things in, in the half court that we try to take away from. Them. So, um, you know, those guys they, they understand that they, they they there's a formula for success. A you got to play with tremendous toughness and togetherness, but then it comes down to so does the other team their own scholarship they practice. So execution and strategy uh, is, determines a lot of games. Uh, so that being said, you know, that, that in our ha in half court, there's no layups, no free throws, no, no standstill threes for shooters. Uh, try to force people to take jump shots inside the line with a hand up and box out. So you like the way they responded to that? Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit. You, you know, at I, I think we got a once we got up over 30, you know, from there on, it, uh, it's tough to say, you know, you're pressing a lot. You know, I, we changed our press at halftime, too. I thought that helped. We took, a guy, we, we, we took the guy off the ball. Their speed, you know, it's, it, it's, when, when you're a pressing team, you got to make adjustments because they have little fast guys. And uh, we were soft trapping, never thrown over and putting a lot of pressure on the back of our defense. They, they, they did a good job of that give them credit early in the game. I, I knew that was going to be a problem, but I wanted to see how we handled their quickness and speed. You know, you've got a smaller team sometimes, you got to change your press a little bit to where um, they got to dribble, dribble the ball a little bit more. We took our guy off the ball and went to a different type of press. You started, you came into this game uh, leading the league in defense, scoring defense. Uh, is that an indication that they haven't played defense to your Satisfaction, or well, we're you know we just got to keep getting better at it because it's going to change you know the type of teams you're playing. Um, like something that we have we have not had to do a lot. We had to do today was deal with a big strong guy on the interior, which they had. Um, I believe it was four, 45, so about yeah. 260, 270, big boy. Um, and even number 50 was a big strong guy ducking in trying to be physical. Um, you know, as the waters get deeper, you're going to have people that are going to have a size advantage on us. So it's something that we haven't had to work on trapping uh, bigger guys in the low post. We haven't had to, to do it quite as much uh, in games as we're probably going to have to as time goes on. So playing poke. So we'll see. I mean, right now it is what it is. I'm happy with our, what we're, our efforts tremendous. But you got to continue to get better because the other teams that you're playing are going to be better, and they're they're improving too. You get in December and school gets out, and everybody's got unlimited practice time. People are start figuring out who should shoot, who should pass, who should be setting screens. It gets harder to win games, so you got to continue to improve. But like I said, our, our team's effort is 
is tremendous. It has been. Our attitude's great. But uh, I will take, to, I took issue with uh, something um, that Bill wrote that I almost passed out when I read about the waters. The waters get deep for us Tuesday night. I don't care what um, our, our opponent's name is, South Carolina Upstate can play. They, they, got, they got real players. They beat Virginia Tech. They blew a close game late at, uh, at Tennessee where they were up 10 in the second half. They lose by one at Kent State. Kent State made 18 threes. Kent State has got a great coach, Rob Senderhoff, and they won at Temple. They got a real team. They lost it in the last second at Seton Hall. South Carolina Upstate, it, 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 it can play. They're a rock solid mid major. We knew that. They have all seniors, returning player of the year in the league, just return their starting five, extremely well coached. Um, that's why we scheduled them. They're 69 in the RPI. We play Middle Tennessee State later on. Another team maybe don't have a great name. Another rock solid team. We're going to have to play to win. So um, we're going to need all, all the fan support we can get on Tuesday night. Offensively, it seems like with each game, Gelon's confidence, at least in his ability to get to the rim and, and look for his shot, seems to be growing. At times, you know, at, at times. He's aggressive off the dribble, but he's not getting ready to shoot off the ball. Um, just keeping him alert. He, he, with, with, with G, what happens, young, young players aren't alert and aware all the time. They, they're, they're, their intensity level and their awareness level is at a high school level. And the more you play at this level, the more you realize you've got to be on point mentally at all times. Um, and gee, it's, it's an evolution for G, because you don't really understand it until you play minutes. In defense of a, a player, it's hard for him to understand that. Um, now, Kevin Johnson is all the time, no matter what. That, you know, that's, that's why I'm uh, so high on his future, because he's got tremendous toughness, and he's, he's always mentally alert and aware. But uh, you know, G's a guy that can make shots, he can beat his man. And it's, it, the more he and Troy get minutes out there, the better off they're going to be, the more comfortable they're going to get. You know, with certain guys, that you got they, they need minutes to get it, get into a comfort zone. The guy like Kevin, is there anything you can do as a coach to get him to slow down? Like when he's, well, when he's struggling is, from the perimeter the right now. His strength is his weakness. You know, he's highly intense. It's like SK early in his career. You know, he's, he's so jacked up and he's so – tough and intense when it's, it's hard to dial that down when all of a sudden it's time to catch him and shoot him. You know, it's just something he's going to have to work himself through. You know, but his first step is tremendous. You know, he doesn't need to shoot it. The way he can blow by guys three feet away from him. His first step is so good. So, I mean, he'll get it. It's just time. We just You can talk to guys about certain things all they want, all you want. It's just they know it, but it's just something they got to go through. You got to take a deep breath when it's time to shoot a perimeter shot. Jermaine Lawrence progressing the way you hoped he would. Did he make some strides today? I think you know, for us, for me, it's every day. You know, I like to see him get get to the glass. Um, I'm worried about his defense and his rebounding. His offense, I think, at times he forces because he, he because he he can dribble, pass, and shoot, and he's got to learn when to pass and when to shoot. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta move the runner over. You know, you just gotta pass it to the guy on the wing. You can't try to make a play every time you touch the ball. He and Titus and Justin coming into the day had 31 of our 63 turnovers. We talked a lot about that the last few days and how those guys have got to be able to let us run the offense through them. But they've, they've got to let it happen. They can't just every time they get the ball. They're going to force plays no matter what the defense does. So with Jermaine, it's just understanding how to read the defense. Again, he gets so excited when he gets his hands on the ball that he doesn't really see where the help is all the time on the defensive end of the floor or on the, on the offensive end. But his, his hustle is great. His, he's rebounding. Uh, he's doing better on post defense than I thought he would do this early in his career. But he's got to realize, too, it's going to get a lot harder. So you think he always tries to make a play because he's so talented that he thinks he can? Yeah, and usually, but the difference at this level, there's help everywhere. Titus has struggled. I mean, you know, it, all of those guys had 31 of our 63 turnovers, all three of them. They got to learn when to just 
pass it to the wing and set the pick and roll. You can't always attack your guy. I think what happened in the first some of our early exhibition games, they were calling that hand check so quick that as soon as those guys caught it and faced their man, put it, took one dribble, they were getting a foul call, and now they're not. And teams are backing off and getting in the gap. Now you got to reverse the ball and go to a pick and show some patience and make the other team defend. You can't just grab it and drive it. It's not going to be that easy. That, I mean, so some of the things maybe we're working for them early on now. You got to see, it's just all about maturing and understanding. You got to read the defense. That's the key. You got to read the defense. Anything else? Well, I appreciate our fans today. Uh, but we had, without the students, we had a, a lot of people came out to support us on uh, on what's normally a, a holiday situation. So I really appreciate that.